Workers in the UK are feeling the pain as the pandemic batters the economy. The unemployment rate has risen for the first time since the lockdown began in March. It increased to 4.1% in the May to July period. 695,000 salaried employees lost their jobs between March and August. Nearly 3 million people have claimed for jobless benefits. The government is facing mounting calls to extend the furlough scheme as companies warn of more layoffs to come. Now, Ollie Barrett joins us live from London for more on this. Ollie, why is the unemployment rate rising despite the economy gradually opening? Part of that, Steve, is because there is a lag in the unemployment figures. Part of it is also because of the furlough scheme that the government has had in place, which has meant that many people haven't yet shown up in the unemployment figures. But as that furlough scheme starts to wind down from this month and will end on the 31st of October, in many of those particularly badly affected industries, companies that had employees on furlough are simply deciding as they get to the end of this scheme that they can't keep them on their payrolls. And we, so we're starting to see that feeding through into the unemployment data. The other thing to bear in mind is that while the UK economy is growing again and is growing again more quickly than many economists had expected and that that is good news, that it is still way below the output of the UK economy before the coronavirus pandemic hit. So that feeds through into the unemployment data as well. Particularly worrying for the UK government, I think, is the impact that all of this is having on uh, young people. That group aged between 16 and 24 are being more affected, according to this latest data, than other age groups are. 156,000 fewer young people in that age bracket in employment in the three months to July uh, compared to the previous quarter. But as I was saying, it's not all bad news. These numbers are, I think, uh, a little bit better than many economists had been expecting at this point in the pandemic. It's also worth saying that job vacancies in the three months to August uh, jumped by 30% to 434,000. So there's potentially some good news mixed in with the bad. Could more aid and stimulus measures be on the cards for Britain then? Certainly, the Bank of England has said that it remains ready to do whatever it takes to boost the UK economy as required. So we could well see some more stimulus from the Bank of England if it is necessary, depending on the trajectory of the outbreak and what that does to the trajectory of the recovery uh, in terms of the UK economy. Chancellor Rishi Sunak is coming under a great deal of fire now from opposition parties for sticking to his plans to wind down that furlough job retention scheme at the end of October. He says he's not going to make a U-turn on that. Prime Minister Boris Johnson has said repeatedly that he doesn't think people should be kept in suspended animation. Um, but certainly the Chancellor is aware that there are going to be major issues coming around the corner. And he's promised to his cabinet colleagues today that he's going to be creative in solutions to that. So it may be that we see individual solutions apply to individual industries that are still particularly badly affected by the pandemic. Those industries and sectors that haven't been able to fully reopen after lockdown. Uh, certainly, though, Chancellor Rishi Sunak, who, according to polls, became very popular indeed when he was splashing out money and um, uh, trying to keep the economy afloat, uh, he's going to come in for some more difficult press now that the, uh, the number of people out of work starts to rise. Well, thanks for that update. Oli Barrett speaking to us from London.